away, everybody. So you could, if you wanted to nibble your own furniture out of virgin wood using nothing but your nails and your teeth. But let's face it, it'd be an awful lot easier if you used tools, be it hand tools or machine tools. Transforming nature into something useful is easier if you use tools. Because the history of the development of tools is the history of conflict. And if you don't believe that, ask the Luddites for their opinion. Whenever we change something, we always tend to be resistive to that change, hearkening back to a kind of idyllic past that just didn't exist, but we are convinced did. And so there's the argument about the loss of craftsmanship. If you move from hand tools to machine tools, somehow mysteriously, something is lost and that is usually put in terms of craftsmanship but when I look at what some people produce on machine tools it, they are things of beauty the craftsmanship is far from being lost it's just different I would argue the reason we have this impression is because the only stuff that's lasted has been the stuff that's been well made. In the past, of course, they made tut. They made stuff that people needed, but the tut didn't last. A long time ago, it ended up on the fire or in the bin. The only thing that's lasted has been the stuff that was beautifully made, and that's all we can refer to. And so we look at it and go, didn't they make things beautifully in the past? Well, the answer is no. They made things beautifully, and they made things horribly. It's just the horrible stuff didn't survive. And I would say it doesn't really matter. If you make something badly, it's not going to last. If you make something with diligence and care and love and design, then yes, it's going to last. And I don't think it matters much whether you make it from hand tools or machine tools. The craftsmanship isn't in the tools. The craftsmanship is in the imagination and the diligence of the person who's making the thing. And of course, that has never changed. I think what happens when we get new tools is that doesn't change. Our creativity stays the same, but the scope of what we can do is broadened when new tools arrive. And the case in point is, um, well, these things, these things are just another tool. They were an altar of technology and where we were supposed to worship them. And I suppose there's a kind of hangover there because people are a little bit of afraid of them. But they're like a circular saw. They're like a drill. They're pretty much comparable in price. A decent saw is going to cost you about 300, 350 pounds. A decent one of these is going to cost you about 300, 350 pounds. And it's a bit like what happened to the music industry when PCs were able to record music. It blossomed. We had a huge growth in garage bands. And this is a toolkit in one that sits on a desk in the back of your house. Creativity could blossom with this because you just don't need the amount of tools that you used to need. Yes, you still have craftsmanship and creativity. <laughs> That's because it comes from within the person, not from within the tool. Owning the tool is just a way of expressing yourself. The tool does nothing all by itself. You have to operate it. How well you operate it is how good a craftsman you are. And these are astonishing for enabling that. It's my guess there's a bit of, well, preaching to the converted with people who like 3D printing going, yep, that's why you like 3D printing. And people who don't like 3D printing going, don't care, don't like 3D printing. And I would say, well, you're a bit focused on the 3D printer. It's a bit like walking into a room and saying, has that chair been handmade? Because if it isn't, I'm standing all day long. It just seems an odd thing to focus on how it was made rather than what's being made, because what's being made is, in my mind, the most important thing. So you might have guessed from the white hair and the Doctor Who style clothes, I'm old. And if you'd asked me what I thought about 3D printing a year ago, I would have given you a very different answer. But now, having been tempted into the digital world by the wicked seductress that is 3D printing, I'm finding it very exciting. And of course, the next step is to get the real world into the computer and that's going to be 3D scanners and what surprised me about 3D scanners is they are currently being described as the essential tool for the garage mechanic and 
<laughs> garage mechanics. You think of them in the same breath as lumberjacks. They're men with cracked knuckles and oil under their fingers and they use tools to do man work. But they're finding an incredible use for 3D scanners. They scan the entire car. And instead of building something and then seeing if it fits, they can fit it in the computer. When they then have it made, it fits beautifully. This is extremely interesting because I'm not a great one for plastic doodads and knickknacks. I want to make things and if I can get some of the real world in there, build a 3D model over that scan and then print it out, to me that's, well, very exciting indeed. So 3D printing and 3D scanning seem to go hand in hand really and having embraced one, I think it's up to me to embrace the other and of course that will inform the things that I make, make it all an awful lot easier and I think improve again the creativity. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.